Hello, this and my other YouTube videos are extracted from the History of Man series, currently six books published in print, ebook, and most importantly, audiobook. I'm a storyteller, and if you like these video stories, you'll love the History of Man series audiobooks. Great for commuting or just sitting back and relaxing. And unlike a novel you've read where you know the ending, you can listen to these books on tape more than once. There's so much to learn. Available on Amazon and audible.com, I narrate the audiobooks. And the best part about that is you can listen to these stories without having to look at my stupid face. And with that said, let's get the show on the road. Hello, this is John Bershoff with another episode of History of Man series. Today's subject, DNA and photo 51. In 1878, scientists knew of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, but it was German biochemist Kossel who discovered nucleon, that's what he called it, later the name was changed to nucleic acid, and he felt it was the central player in life, in genetics. Kossel identified five distinct nucleons, adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine, uracil. In 1919, Levine discovered a three-dimensional structure to this nucleic acid stuff. There was attached sugar and attached phosphate, and it sort of gave the structure a three-dimensional structure, like a string of pearls, not yet decided that it was a helix, but it was three-dimensional. However, in 1937, British physicist Asbury used X-ray diffraction to determine nucleon had some type of helical structure. Now, the X of X-ray, by the way, when X-rays were first discovered by the German Roentgen in 1895, did not make an X pattern. It was an unknown waveform, and so he assigned the value of this unknown waveform X, or X-ray, you know, like those algebra equations that we used to get in fifth period math, x equals whatever. But with x-ray diffraction revealing a helical shape to this nucleic acid stuff, the race was on to identify the exact structure of nucleic acids. American chemist Linus Pauling, the avatar of chemistry, had already determined the single helical structure of proteins and he had already won a Nobel in chemistry for elucidating the nature of the chemical bond. Prior to discovery of DNA, proteins were thought to be the seat of genetic material, not this nucleic acid mishigas. And I go and lose my autographed copy of Linus Pauling's book, The Chemical Bond, published in 1939. In all my moves and college and medical school, boxes here, boxes there. I've lost that autograph book. See, I had met Pauline at an Ohio college where he was given a lecture and I brought my book, met him, he autographed it, and like an idiot, I go and lose it. But anyway, Pauline was the greatest chemist in the world, but he was stuck on a triple helix for nucleic acid. Watson and Crick were okay chemists. They were no Linus Pauline, and we are not even sure what structure they were initially working on. A single helix, a double helix, a triple helix, whatever helix. In 1944, Oswald Avery, Colin McLeod, Macklin McCarty, working with bacteria, demonstrated the genetic change in life occurred at the level of this nuclein acid mishigas, not proteins. So they then knew this structure, this nucleic acid structure, was the genetic code. What they had done is they had infected some bacteria with a live virus, and viruses are really nothing more than a string of nucleic acids. The virus taken up by the bacteria, the bacteria changed, the only change was what the virus had given to it, proving nuclein 
carry the genetic code. You would think with names like Oswald Avery, Colin McLeod, Macklin McCarty, you think they were British or Scottish, working at the famed Cavendish Labs in Cambridge, in England. And if you thought that, who blame you? But actually, Avery and McLeod were Canadian Americans, and McCarty was American, and all three were working at the Rockefeller University in Rochester, New York. Go figure. But anyway, in our story now steps Notting Hill. Not the 1999 fun chick flick film Notting Hill starring Julia Roberts as Anna Scott and Hugh Grant as William Thacker. Rather, in steps to our story, Rosalind Franklin, a Brit from Notting Hill, London. She received her, she received her training at Cambridge, did her postgrad work in Paris, returned to Britain where she became an exceptional X-ray crystallographer. Now, Photo 51 is not to be confused with Area 51 in Nevada, where some people think the U.S. Army has aliens. In 1952, Photo 51 was taken in Franklin's lab, and it was the best X-ray crystallographic image of DNA. In confidence, Rosalind Franklin showed Photo 51 to her bosses, John Randall and Maurice Wilkins, who, without her permission, showed it to Watson and Crick. From what Watson and Crick knew about nucleic acids and plus Photo 51, they were able to piece together the double helix of DNA. They also appreciated that adenine always paired with thymine and that guanine always paired with cytosine. What about uracil, the fifth nucleic acid? It's only present in RNA where it replaces thymine, a story in itself for another day. But anyway, it is said that had Pauline and Watson and Crick been shown Photo 51 simultaneously, like the game show Jeopardy with Alex Trebek and Vanna White, Pauline would have hit the buzzer first. Pauline would have instantly known it was a double helix and what the pairings were, whereas Watson and Crick, not as good as chemists as Pauline, had to retreat to their lab and work out the structure. Watson Crick Wilkins got the 1962 Nobel for Lucy Baden, the double helix structure of DNA. Rosalind Franklin got nothing because she had already died four years earlier in 1958, age 37, from ovarian cancer. Nobels are not given posthumously. Linus Pauling died in 1994, age 93, from prostate cancer. Francis Crick died in 2004, age 88, from colon cancer. Maurice Wilkins also died in 2004, age 87, likely from old age. And James Watson is still alive. Watson is in his 90s, and he has fallen from grace and fallen far. He has more than sullied his name after doing this DNA work. Among many racist, sexist, and homophobic comments James Watson has made in his elderly years, he went on record using phrenology, the disproven science of skull anatomy, as it relates to intelligence, to state that blacks are genetically inferior to whites. This is what Watson states. Nearly every award and honor Watson received over his lifetime has now been stripped from him, except the Nobel. There is no mechanism to strip a Nobel. The Nobel Committee states it is not its responsibility for the actions of its laureates once they receive the Nobel Award. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode of History of Man series. I have six books out, more to come. This is the first History of Man. It's a style of writing called Jumping Off, where I take a base subject, in my case, medicine and science, and jump off into astronomy, and music, and art, and geology, and all kinds of stuff, always returning back. It's maybe not a style of writing for everyone, but I always come back to the original subject. And I promise with every turn of the page, you will probably learn something. 
I certainly did. I hope you're well and you have a good day. Thank you.